Let's go. Welcome back, everyone. Um, we are about to learn a lot of obligations of derivatives. Um, so, what's the last thing I said yesterday? The last thing I said is that if the derivative is positive um, of a function, then the function is increasing. And if it's negative, the function is decreasing. And this was a consequence of the mean value theorem, which um, it's kind of surprising because the mean value theorem looks very useless at first. And then it gives you consequences like these, which are extremely useful. So let's do an example of how to, how to apply this. So um, where is this function? Increasing or decreasing? Well, according to what we showed yesterday, to answer this question, um, all we need to know is where the derivative is positive. So what do we do? What do we gotta do to figure that out? Uh, I think the first thing is to take the derivative. So um, you leave the coefficient where it is, you put the exponent out in front, and you subtract one from the exponent. That's the um, that's the power rule. And you do that for all the terms in the polynomial. And the constant term uh, becomes zero. <clears throat> so, um, so we got to figure out where, where this function is is positive and negative. So back in the day, back in in your in your childhood, how did you how did you show? Uh, how do you find where a function was positive or negative? What are you supposed to do with this um, with this polynomial? Didn't you like use the um, like leading like coefficient and then like sometimes the degree? And what do we do with those? So here's the leading coefficient and here's the degree. Um, so like if it's, if the degree like that, that's a three, right? That's a three, yeah. Um, if it's odd, and then like since here the leading coefficient is positive, um, like the left side of the graph goes down, and then the right side's going to go up. All right. Um, so I guess that takes care. That takes care of most of it. So 
the fact that like Pascal was saying, the fact that this this function is essentially the same as two x cubed, um, especially as x is very large, big or um, positive or negative, means that it's going to do what x cubed does. So I guess it's yeah, it's positive after a while and it's negative after a while on the left. Um, but I still got to figure out what happens in the middle. All right. So what you do is you is you see where it's zero. Um, if you know where, uh, this is a continuous function, so. If it goes from positive to negative, from, from negative to positive, it has to go through zero. So, um, so, can anyone give me a solution to this equation? X equals zero. Thank you, Sam. Uh, if I make x equals zero, that becomes zero plus zero plus zero. Uh, so the function goes through zero, zero. Uh, and since it's a polynomial, that means that I can factor out x minus zero, actually. Let's just get rid of that 12 while we're at it. 12x. Uh, I can factor out an x because zero is a solution. So now, if the function is going to be zero at a point, it's either because this is zero, which means that's the same answer, that x is zero, or because uh, this is zero. This is zero, x squared minus x minus 2x. So when is x squared minus 2 minus x minus uh, not 2x, no? Minus 2 equal to 0. When x equals 2. And one when more? x is minus 1. When x is minus 1. Uh, it's a polynomial of degree 3, so we expect it to have uh, three solutions. which you can guess, well, once you have the upper degree two polynomial, you know the two solutions, their product is uh, negative two and their sum is one. So that's probably the easiest way. Okay, so the derivative is 12 x times x minus one, x plus two. No, all the way around. Plus one minus two. So that means there's it passes through zero on um, uh, three three times. So I think the way you are usually taught to do this in algebra classes is to write down where each of the terms is positive or negative. Um, and then write down the product. So the, the important points are negative 1, uh, 0, and 2. So I guess four different things can happen. <clears throat> And x is negative when I'm when x is less than zero, and it's positive when x is bigger than zero. X plus one becomes positive once x is bigger than negative one. X minus two 
becomes positive once x becomes bigger than two. And now we multiply these three signs. We have uh, three minuses, two minuses, one minus, one plus. So um, this means that if x is more than negative one or x is between zero and two, then the derivative, remember this was the derivative of the function, is negative, which means that f of x uh, is increasing. If uh, we're between negative one and zero, or we're bigger than two, then uh, the derivative is positive. So the function is, the, oh, wait, what? Oh. If the derivative is negative, the, the function is decreasing. If the if the derivative is positive, that means the function is increasing. So, um, so that's it. That's the solution. I'm gonna draw a picture to see if I did it right, but I'm done. Any questions? I. I'm, a, I'm, I'm confused with the entire process, to be quite honest. Um, so like in the beginning, whenever you took the derivative, you look at the um, the one, like the part of the expression that has like the highest exponent and see like, like what type of like shape it is or something. Yeah, I didn't, I mean, to be fair, I didn't really use that in the end. Um, this, this graph, I ended up not using for anything. What I did do was factor it. Um, so I wanted to know where this is positive or negative. So you, what you do, since this is a polynomial, you factor it and you see where each of the factors is positive or negative. So um, if I have it in into, I have it split into three factors. If I know which one of these is positive and which is negative, I know if the final answer is positive or negative. So for example, if x is negative three, all three are negative and I have the products. So if x is negative three, I'm in here, all three are negative and the product of three negatives is negative. And then you keep going. If x is bigger than negative one, well, x is negative, but x plus one becomes positive um, and x minus two, if we're between negative one and zero, x minus two is negative, and now I have the product of two negatives, so it's a positive. And and you do this for all the all the intervals. So just like uh, to recap, just to make sure I'm understanding. So like once you take the derivative and you factor it and set it each of like the parts equal to zero and find like what x is equal to, then you set up that thing that you just did? Yeah, because um, if, if the function is going to change, if, the, if, the, if this function is going to change signs, it has to go through zero by the intermediate value theorem. It can't go from positive to negative unless it's discontinuous. It can go from positive to negative without passing through zero. Okay. Let me so so for example, I know that if I plug in x equals one, it's positive. If if I if it wasn't zero anywhere, I would know that it's positive everywhere. Because how can you get to, to negative one without passing through zero? You can't. Because the function is continuous. Anyway, the moral of the story is that uh, 
telling if a, if a function is increasing and decreasing is the same thing as telling if another function is positive and negative. Uh, and in principle, that's not, a, that's not even a calculus problem anymore. That's a pre-calculus problem, which could be very hard, honestly, if the function is very hard. Um, <clears throat> Um, okay, so I said, so let's see if I can, uh, draw this graph. So the answer that I got is that, uh, to the left of negative one, the derivative is negative, then it becomes positive then it becomes negative and then positive again. So um, here, uh, so if the derivative is negative, the function decreases and then increases and then decreases and then increases. So it should look like going down, going up, going down, going up. <clears throat> and for the more this is negative one, this is zero, and this is two. So uh, let's see, let's see if it's if I'm right. Three x to the fourth um, minus four x cubed. Oh, I lost it. minus 12x squared plus 5. So I said, oh, this is, doesn't bear the case. Um, I said it would decrease until it reaches negative 1, and then it would increase until it reaches 0, and then it would decrease until it reaches 2 over there, and, and then it increases forever. So we got the right answer. Um, and Desmos knows that this is a local min, this is a local max, and this is a local min, which is why it's showing it to me. <coughs> so so that's that's it. So um So thinking about this probably makes us realize that I can tell a local min and a local max using uh, using the derivative like this. Um, so we call um, if if f has a local min or max then f prime of x is zero at the points. So the, the natural question is, if I know that the derivative is zero at a point, how can I tell if he has a mean or a max or neither? Because I don't really, we don't really have a good answer to that yet. Um, not a good answer. Yeah, so uh, min or a max. So that's the, the next question I want to answer. And the thing is, this is what a local max looks like. This is what a local min looks like. And this is what neither looks like. It's either something, well, but it has to have horizontal tangent. So the, the function becomes horizontal at a point, but um, it's not, 
well, it's you know, local mean or local max. So what's happening uh, is that this function goes up. If it goes up to a point and then down, that's a local max. Um, so if you have a local max, that means that your function increases and then decreases. If you have a local min, that means that your function first decreases. And then increases. And if you if you have neither, it means that either it keeps increasing or it keeps decreasing. So if I can write this in terms of the function being increasing or decreasing, that means I can write it in terms of the derivative. In terms of the derivative, if you're increasing, that means that the derivative is positive and then it's negative. If it decreases, then the derivative is negative. If it increases, then the derivative is positive. Uh, here, if it increases, the derivative is, is positive, and then it stays positive. Here, it's negative, and then it stays negative. So um, this is what I just wrote down, is what we call the first derivative test. Um, because we test to see if we have a local max or a min using the first derivative. <clears throat> if um, f prime of c, if, if we have a critical point, um, then uh, one of three things can happen. If f prime goes from uh, positive to negative, uh, F has a local max at C. If F prime goes from negative to positive, well, if the derivative goes from negative to positive, that means that the function goes from decreasing to increasing, which means it goes down and up, that's a local min. If f doesn't change sign at c, then f uh, doesn't have a local max or min at c. <clears throat> so this is what the first derivative test is. Um, Oh, well, that doesn't, that doesn't look the same at all. Okay, whatever. Um, if I go like this, nope, that can work. Um, okay, so, um, so that's it, that's the first derivative test. Um, so now if you have a critical point, if you look at the sign of the derivative, you can tell if it's a, a local main or a max or or neither, which is um, which is great. It's very convenient. Uh, let's see. So the example in the book. Um, let's do x plus two sine x. Mm 
Yeah. No, I don't like this example. We already did a very similar one. Let's do the function. Um, you do the x minus x. So, <clears throat> so this example. So, um, well, we're going to use the derivative. Um, so, first thing to do. So this kind of can always go the same way. Uh, find find all the critical points, the maxes and mins. Um, are among these, so. So we need to solve the equation derivative equals zero. So what's the derivative of this function? Is it e to the x minus one? Yes, it is. Thank you, Adam. Um, the derivative of e to the x is itself. The derivative of negative x is negative one. So I need to solve e to the x equals um, e to the x minus one equals zero. No. No. So I feel like I should write e to the x equals one. And then what do I do? Do you take the ln of both sides? Uh, yeah, I agree that that's what we should do. You wanna you wanna get rid of the exponential function, and the way to do that is to take the logarithm of both sides. Uh, the logarithm of one is zero. And when you take ln of the exponential, you get, um, they cancel each other out. So um, you get, you get x equals zero. That's the solution. So ln of one is zero. ln of e to anything equals anything. So there's only one critical point, uh, which is x equals zero. So is it a maximum or a minimum? Or neither? Well, for that we can use the we can use the first derivative test. If x is negative, um, is f prime positive or negative? Um, so what happens to e to the x minus one if x is negative? Would it be less than zero? I think so. Uh, the right, yeah. I agree. Uh, thank you, Adam. So, um, if x is negative, the exponential. So, the, um, the expon the exponential function has a negative exponent, um, which is the same, if you like, uh, as one over the opposite in the denominator. So now, you can write this negative x. Uh, 
then negative x is positive. So you take a positive exponent of um, exponential of x and you get a number bigger than one. So you do one over that, you get a number smaller than one, or you just or you just know how to graph e to the x, right? e to the x goes from smaller than one to bigger than one. Either way, if x is negative, e to the x is smaller than one. Um, and now I'm probably taking pages. So recap. The derivative is e to the x minus one. If x is negative, e to the x is smaller than one. So e to the x minus one is negative. Um, and this is f prime of x. And uh, for basically the same reason, if x is positive, the exponential function is bigger than one. So e to the x minus one is bigger than zero. So f prime goes from positive to negative, uh, that means that uh, that means that f goes from increasing to decreasing. Oh, no, that's not. Oh. f goes from negative to positive is what I just figured out. So it goes from decreasing to increasing. So if you go from decreasing to increasing, what does that tell you? Um, About, about the function about the function at, at zero. It's a local maximum. It's a no, it's a local minimum. It goes it goes down then up. Oh, okay. Um okay. Let's see. So remember, so an easy thing to mess up here is to forget which is the function and which is the derivative and start solving things like f equals zero or saying that the derivative has a minimum. So the function e to the x minus x it does look like it has a uh, minimum at x equals zero. So, by the way, um, this function is defined on the whole, on every number. So it's not a closed bounded interval. So there's no guarantee that it has a global minimum. For example, it doesn't have a global maximum. Uh, but while we're here, it's, is this um is this a global minimum? It sure looked like it. No, I was going absolute ugh. It's going them absolute and relative. Uh, Is this the absolute minimum of the function? Um, well, it is. It looks. It looks like it. So I think it is. Uh, do I? So how could I um, realize that this is true? Um, <clears throat> well, let me tell you. It is because. Um, for all the positive numbers, uh, the derivative is positive. I I did that over over here. So f increases forever. 
for all the negative numbers, the derivative is negative. So f decreases. And, and if you're decreasing forever until you reach x equals 0, and then you increase forever, you're never going to hit a smaller number. And that's all there is to it. Uh, so the thing, the thing with not having a closed bounded interval is that you're not guaranteed an absolute minimum or maximum again. But there are ways still that you could figure it out. Like for example, in, in this example, I know it, in, it decreases forever, then increases forever. This function, this graph is never gonna dip down below, well, it, here it's never gonna dip down below one, but here it's never gonna dip down below five, and then it's ne never gonna go below 10. It's never gonna reach anything smaller than one. And the same goes here. Here, it, I mean, essentially looks like y equals negative x. Okay. Um, so that's the first derivative test. Are there any questions? Yep, not. Okay, um, so so what else? Um, the um, what should I tell this one side of the second derivative test? The second derivative. So let's take two functions. Let's look at x cubed and, uh, well, it's inverse x to one third. Uh, so, like the, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna sketch their graphs. So uh, for both of them, at zero, there's some very easy point to check at zero. Uh, they're both zero. So they go through through the origin, um, and then uh, I can, for example, I can tell if they're increasing or decreasing, which is very useful for graphing. So the derivative of uh, um, of x cubed is 3x squared. So where is this function positive and where is it negative and where is it zero? Where is 3x squared equal to 0? Zero. Zero. And nowhere else. And where is it positive? To the left of 0 to the right of 0? The right. And where is it negative? To the left. Uh, no, it's not negative to the left. Um, if you take a negative number, and you square it, you get a positive number. So this is a problem. Uh, it's positive both on both sides of zero. I'm gonna mess with you there because I said to the left or to the right as if 
it was only one of those. Uh, the answer is both. So, so F is increasing everywhere. Because uh, its derivative is positive. So this critical point is not a max or a min. And for example, you know, the approach is infinity. At zero, um, it approaches um, it approaches at infinity. Sorry, it approaches infinity. It approaches negative infinity on the other side. So it probably looks something like this. Um, so what about the other function? Um, so this one, uh, well, it's not differentiable at zero. So what's the derivative of x to the one third? Um, one third times x to the negative two over three. Yeah, uh, thank you. So this is, ooh, this is one over three cubic root of x squared. So notice that there's a square there, which means that this is gonna be, well, this is gonna be always positive. So um, g prime of zero does not exist. And if x is not zero, g prime is positive because the square is positive. Anything you put in there, um, x squared is gonna is gonna be positive, and then the cubic root is gonna be positive, and the one third is not gonna change anything, or the denominator. So. Um, so G is also always increasing. But well, I know what it looks like because it's the inverse of, um, of X cubed, but it turns out um, it looks like this. Um, so, so how can I tell the difference? Um, so what's the what's the difference between these two graphs? Um, how would you describe it? You know, if I was, I mean, if I wasn't looking at them, how would you describe to me the difference between them? They're both approaching infinity, by the way. They're both increasing. They both pass through zero. They both have a critical point at zero. Does it have something to do with like it being vertical and like horizontal or? Uh, I guess, well, that's not the thing I was thinking about, but that is, uh, that is a difference. You're right. I mean, this one, at the origin, this one is horizontal and this one is vertical, which makes the second one not differentiable. But I, I, I kind of, what I want to look at is this part and, and this part. They have different shapes. Can't hear anything? Never mind. Okay. Monotonic. Monotonic means is the same as saying that it's always increasing or always decreasing. Um, monotonic is not a, I think it's not a word I've ever used in class. Um, how can I give you a hint? 
I mean, you know, you can see the shape. Um, what's the difference between this shape and this shape? The steeper slope points are on x equals zero. <clears throat> okay. Um, is it, wait, sorry. Is it yeah. about, does that have to do with the concavity or no? Yes, he has to do with the concavity. That's what I'm getting at. So what's the right. concavity? Um, well, the first one that you drew is concave up. Mm -hmm. And the second one is concave down. What, what does that mean in common words? Mm -hmm. the, How do you look at something and tell if it's concave up? The shape. <laughs> the shape? Oh, I mean, <laughs> so. Which of these shapes are concave up and which are concave down? The thing is, I don't think you're looking at those shapes and, and computing the second derivative. Concave up is decreasing then increasing. Okay, so so these ones are concave up up. What about what if I what if I draw something that only decreases? Is this one concave up? Is it concave down? Is it neither? I disagree. What if I, you know, if I erase part of this, does it stop being concave up? I think it keeps being concave up. So, I mean, I think you're all getting at the right idea. The thing is concave up means you bend upwards and concave down means you bend down. Um, Okay, so the book, the book calls it concave up. You, I might call it convex up, uh, and some people call it convex. Um, a lot of confusion with this word. Um, um, it is concave down, or convex down, or concave uh, if it bends down. Uh, so. If, so this is this is terrible because I'm pretty sure for most people convex means con means it's facing up, concave means concave up, but there's there's some people who call that concave and for some people convex mean convex down. So the best thing to do is just say the word, make sure to say the word up or down somewhere in the somewhere in there so that no one is confused. Uh, I don't care which one you call it, but I guess if you call it convex without saying up or down, I'm gonna be confused as well. Uh, so, okay, so this is bending upwards. We have intuitive understanding of what that means, but uh, I would rather, I would like to have a more precise way of saying it so we can all agree So um, a function is uh, vocals with concave, which is kind of strange. Um, if it is always uh, a concave level in an interval, 
if it is always above the tangent line. Uh, it is concave down if it is below. So here are all the ways you could, here's, well, not all the ways, uh, you could be concave up. So you could have look like a local minimum or not like a local minimum, you could always be decreasing and concave up. Mm, I, and I, I'm kind of out of things to draw. Anything I can draw is gonna look the same. So if you draw the tangent lines, the thing, the thing is if you bend up, that makes you be always above the tangent line. And that is a way of telling that you're concave up. And if you if you turn the screen upside down, you get some functions which are concave down. So um, you already, I think Matthew already hinted at the fact that this is useful for telling if we have a max or a min as well, because uh, a max always look concave down, a main always looks uh, concave up. Okay, that's it. Um, that's it for today. Sydney says, can you draw them? And I don't know what she's referring to. Maybe, maybe you said that before I drew them. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, stop recording. Uh,